The film begins with Sherry, a young single mother and pre-law student employed as a secretary in a Los Angeles legal firm. She finds herself in a meeting with the HR manager, addressing an inappropriate remark made by her colleague Larry. The HR manager appears to be attempting to downplay the issue, opting for evasive and minimized responses. On her way home, Sherry receives a call from her boss, James, informing her that she by mistake double-booked him for a dinner with a crucial client, which coincides with his anniversary dinner. Surprisingly, Sherry has no recollection of this. James requests Sherry to attend the dinner with the client on his behalf, during the phone call. A creepy man on the bus approaches Sherry inappropriately, touching her thigh. Frustrated and disturbed, she quickly leaves the bus and reluctantly agrees to James' request. At home, while taking a shower, Sherry notices that her period has started and realizes she has run out of tampons. Later, Anita, Sherry's babysitter, arrives, who also happens to be one of her friends. The friend encourages Sherry to dress up and be confident for the evening. However, before Sherry leaves, her friend hands her a canister of pepper spray for security. Sherry meets the client, Ethan, at his house and is captivated by his appearance and demeanor. He offers her a drink, mentioning that he only has gin and tonic available. Suddenly, Sherry notices some drops of blood on the floor, which initially unsettles her. However, she quickly realizes that it is her own menstrual blood and politely asks to use the bathroom. Sherry and Ethan proceed to have dinner at a sushi restaurant, which Nathan intentionally chose after discovering Sherry's preferences through her social media. Sherry finds herself charmed by Ethan, despite his sudden burst of anger when approached by a dog. He explains that a childhood dog bite caused this reaction. After dinner, they head to a skate rink and spend an enjoyable time together. Sherry becomes completely infatuated with Ethan. As the evening progresses, Ethan extends an invitation for Sherry to spend the night with him. He sets an alarm on his phone for early morning, ensuring that she can return home before her daughter wakes up. However, Sherry notices that there is already an alarm set for 5.25 a.m. on his phone as they enter his house, the door close in front of our eyes. Leaving us in silence. Moments later, we begin to hear Sherry's panting and screams echoing from a distance within the house. Suddenly, Sherry bursts through the door, fleeing out into the night, Sherry, fueled by fear and adrenaline, manages to climb over a fence and leaps down onto the street. Desperate for help, she frantically approaches nearby residents, pleading for assistance, only to be met with indifference. Finally, she stumbles upon two women outside a movie theater and convinces them to call 911. Reluctantly, one of the women dials the emergency number, summoning the police. When the police arrive at the scene, to Sherry's disappointment, they arrest her for public intoxication, completely disregarding her pleas of being attacked. Being kept in a cell, Sherry talks to another woman who becomes anxious upon hearing Sherry's description of Ethan. The woman grows increasingly alarmed when Sherry mentions Ethan's preference for gin and tonic and his claims of having only that drink. She shares a disturbing truth that one of her friends had encountered Ethan before and mysteriously disappeared. Fearing for her own safety, she pleads with the police to release her, warning Sherry that Ethan has a manipulative hold over men and advising her to seek the help of the First Lady. Against all odds, the police allow Ethan access to Sherry's cell, where he ominously informs her that he will pursue her ruthlessly, promising to release her if she manages to survive until morning, facing a terrifying threat, Sherry battle for survival. Upon her release, she seeks refuge at James' apartment, hoping for support. She get on a taxi to James' house, and during the ride, the taxi driver reveals that he has encountered many girls who have been caught up in similar situations like Sherry's. James appears sympathetic, offering her a shower and clean clothes. Curious about James' knowledge of Ethan's true nature, Sherry directly asks him if he was aware of Ethan's dangerous character. In a seemingly innocent manner, James denies any knowledge, saying that he would never have let her meet Ethan if he knew he was dangerous. After taking a shower, Sherry decides to investigate Ethan further. She uses James' computer and discovers a disturbing truth, she is just the latest victim in a long line of women marked as targets for Ethan. As Sherry discovers this horrifying news, James' wife, Judy, warns her about Ethan's sharp sense of smell, 
advise her to careful cleanse herself, suddenly, James reappears, acting suspicious and inquiring about the situation. Sensing his dishonesty, Sherry swiftly flee the apartment. She catch a bus and manages to borrow the bus driver's phone to call her ex-boyfriend, Trey, seeking his help in this situation, while making a quick stop at a gas station to purchase tampons, Sherry is unexpectedly ambushed by Ethan. The store owner initially tries to intervene, pointing a gun at Ethan, but is swiftly threatened, leaving Sherry helpless. Seizing a moment of distraction, Sherry gathers her courage and deliver a powerful strike to Ethan's head, allowing her to escape with the help of Trey, her ex-boyfriend, Trey drives her to his place, despite the presence of his new girlfriend, Dawn, who happens to be Sherry's former best friend. However, Dawn shows unexpected sympathy upon learning about Sherry's attack. Their relief is short-lived as Ethan arrives, seeking Sherry, and despite Dawn and her friends arming themselves to confront him, Ethan easily overpowers and kills them, leaving Sherry in unimaginable horror. Trey returns home and confronts Ethan, but Ethan mercilessly decapitates Trey. Sherry runs away in fear, with Ethan chasing after her, attempting to manipulate her into giving up. Suddenly, he gets hit by a car. Recalling Judy's advice, Sherry cleverly uses her menstrual blood to mislead Ethan by throwing it onto a passing car. She then continues to run away. Sherry seeks help from a priest at a nearby church, asking holy water and a crucifix in hopes of protecting herself from Ethan. To her shock, she discovers the lifeless body of the priest, realizing that Ethan has taken on his appearance. Ethan then unveils his true, terrifying form to Sherry. However, the priest wakes up and attack Ethan, making an opportunity for Sherry to escape. Sherry finds her way into an underground rave. She goes into a bathroom, clean her wound and take a military jacket from a couple inside. She found the flyer with the first lady contact number. Sherry manages to steal a bag containing a phone, allow her to make a phone call and get the location of the first lady at a nearby spa. As she walks through the rave, Sherry is disturbed by a group of men, making inappropriate demands for her to remove the military uniform she's wearing. She is rescued by a group of party girls who take her with them. As they leave the rave, they kindly offer Sherry the chance to go surfing with them in the early morning, and Sherry realizes that Ethan's alarm was set for sunrise. Out of nowhere, blood starts streaming down Sherry's forehead, and at that precise moment, a powerful force collides with the car, resulting in the death of everyone except Sherry. Just as that happens, Ethan starts an attack on her, but Sherry is ultimately saved when a pit bull suddenly appears, barking at Ethan and causing him to vanish. Seeing everyone around her being brutally killed, she begins to cry and scream out of despair. At the spa, Sherry discovers the first lady, Dinah, tell people to mix her blood with water and pour it down the drain, explaining that it will spread Sherry's scent everywhere and confuse Ethan, making it harder for him to track her. Dinah explains that Ethan is a fallen angel whose job was to protect and guide humanity. However, Ethan chose to promote male dominance and exerted his immense powers to ensure male superiority throughout history. Dinah says that she needs to use Sherry as bait to lure Ethan out so that he can be defeated. Initially, Sherry refuses because she doesn't want to take any risks. She sought out the First Lady for protection, not to directly confront Ethan. However, after Dinah reveals that Ethan will attempt to harm her daughter if he doesn't get what he wants and that he is willing to annihilate entire bloodlines, Sherry changes her mind, the women help Sherry clean herself up, and she then drives to the Santa Monica Pier. Once there, Sherry deliberately reopens her wounds, luring Ethan towards her, after a fierce struggle, using her own blood as bait to lure Ethan out, he finally appears and begins to torment her. Sherry is beaten unconscious, and when she regains consciousness, she finds herself crucified. Ethan continues to taunt her, mocking and advising her to give up. Sherry finally whispers that she wants him. Ethan forcibly pulls her down from the crucifix. Put her on the ground and continue BFing. Just as Ethan is about to kill Sherry, his alarm clock goes off, signaling the arrival of Dawn. Realizing the situation, Sherry seizes the opportunity and throws a rock at the blacked-out window, exposing Ethan to the sunlight and injuring him. The women from the spa, who have gathered outside, throw more rocks through the windows, flooding the room with sunlight and mortally weakening Ethan. Ethan, at this moment, flees from Sherry, crawling to the rooftop, 
leaving behind a long black trail, Sherry mocks the now weakened Ethan as his power dies. Dinah lights Ethan on fire, causing the flames to follow the long black trail he left behind, engulfing and consuming him, the movie concludes with a scene of Sherry walking home, and she is eventually is able to hold her daughter in her arms. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like for more videos like this.